Well, Donald Trump laid out a number of plans yesterday that he would introduce during his first 100 days in Congress. Those include his vision for Obamacare, tax brackets, also the infrastructure investments. Here to discuss this with me, Trump advisor Oliver McGee, a former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Transportation. Oliver, with a welcome to you, I want to go right to taxes first, because as you know, sir, he has promised to reduce corporate tax rate, rework the income tax brackets as well. But if he reduces taxes for some, would that not mean that it would go up for others? I mean, who do you think ultimately pays the difference? Thank you for having me, Alex. This election is not about change. It's about enough taxes, enough infrastructure crashes, enough health care problems. In regards to your question on taxes, he's really called the 25% man. He's saying that if you owe 25, uh, if, you, if you earn $25,000, uh, you, you have no taxes. If you're a married couple, you have $50,000 in income, you have no taxes. If you're a corporation, we're going to drop your taxes, which, which is the highest in the world, down to 15%. And if you earn more than $50,000, you have 25% taxes. That's a simple tax model. It's getting rid of all the loops holes and basically downsizing the IRS. We spend half our year each year figuring out our taxes. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> it's so much paperwork. I do my taxes right now and it's 40 pages. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. So it, it, this election is really not about change. It's about enough is enough. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's going to do in the tax front. Well, I think, and, everyone and can, also, I also think everybody could, could say, hey, let's simplify the tax code. That would be a good thing for so many people. I do want to ask you about Obamacare because he says he's going to repeal it. Yes. He's going to replace it with some health savings accounts. But th those are two very different benefits. So why is this his approach? Well, 80%, uh, Alex, of our health care is covered by whether you have a job, whether you basically have uh, your own health care. If you like your health care, you can keep your health care. That's 80% of health care in this country. The other 20%, which is representing about 20 million people or who are out of health care, it needs to go back to Congress and rethink it in a, not a divided government, but a shared governance. And basically, uh, Donald Trump is, we, 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 all Americans may not agree with Trump, but at, at at the same time, Trump is for all Americans, and he's interested for us all to have health care. I always say that you have to have a job first, mm -hmm. and if you have a job, you can get some good health care. If you don't have a job, that's stressful on your health, and so get, therefore you're definitely not going to be healthy. So I think essentially what we're going to do is go back into the shared governance model, and that's what you see going on the downside of the ticket, what? is everyone has, can be on board for health care. That's the thing that every American can get on board what with. What about the infrastructure investment program? promise a trillion dollars he says he's going to put into that where does he anticipate finding the funding for this or would that have to raise the national debt Alex, I was so glad to see this morning that we're going to talk about infrastructure. This morning we had a bus crash in, uh, that basically is always a shocking event. And, and, and recently we've had a train crash in, in New Jersey running into a building. We need to build our bridges. We need to build the science and technology portfolio. Uh, we need to build the workforce development. We, we need to build a Trump train. The Trump train would cost uh, a half a trillion dollars to build. And do you know how many jobs that would create across the nation? We could run the train and get high-speed rail system up to the 21st century like all of our competitive countries. This is a global com competitiveness question to build our infrastructure, to build the, the, the essence of the foundation of America. Hmm. This is essentially what we want to do. If we don't do this, this election is going to be, I hope, we, I hope our likely voters have a soft saddle because we're in for a, a rough ride on that bucking horse if we do not build this infrastructure right away. You know, Oliver, I'm going to um, tell you that we are just getting some live pictures of that crash, a horrific, deadly crash. 13 people at least have been killed, 31 injured. This uh, on the Interstate 10 westbound towards Los Angeles in the Palm Springs area. Given your experience within the Department of Transportation, the investigation will go where at this point? And, and I will say you talk about infrastructure. I do want to make the point we don't know that infrastructure has anything to do with the cause of this crash happening at 5 a.m. this morning. Absolutely. It's not necessarily that, but it's really all about safety. And when we go into transportation policy, we're really talking about safety and security of the transportation enterprise. But it's also a very powerful science and technology policy. So this is essentially what both candidates have to look at in their 100-day plan. Infrastructure is not something down the list. It is now a high national priority. If we're a crumbling infrastructure nation, we are in trouble in our global competitiveness. This investigation is going to go straight to the proper position 
authorities in the National Transportation Safety Board. They are wonderful agency, safety agency, the best in the world. And they basically get to the bottom of what happened. Mm -hmm. Usually when we see a bus crash or a train crash or an airplane crash, which I talk about all the time on television, I'm talking to the American people about what happened because they want to know that within 24 to 72 hours so that the next time they get on a bus or get on a train or get right. in a car or get on an airplane, they can feel safe. And that's a national priority for the government. All Both right. policies in their first 100 days have to be talking about that. Former, former official in the, in the Department of Transportation, um, Oliver McGee, thank you very much. Currently an advisor with Donald Trump. Appreciate your time and your insights. And for all of you, again, we're of course thank following. You, yes, sir. Uh, this bus crash, as we're giving you the first live pictures into it, it was described to us earlier by a KMIR producer on scene how the front half of that bus had been sheared away and by his estimation, an absolute miracle that anybody survived that bus crash. You can see for yourself why. We're going to come back at the bottom of the hour with more news and updates from Palm Springs, California. Stay with us.